This question deals with a 26-month-old boy who is brought to the physician by his parents because he has poor eye contact and keeps flapping his hands and chewing on them. He has delayed social, motor, and language skills. Physical exam shows a long, narrow face, large ears, flat feet. Which of the following best explains the findings in, in this boy? Now, this is a typical example of fragile X. I have not found any other genetic disease where they talk about long face, large ears, flat feet, along with mental retardation, social, social uh, delayed social skills, and flapping of hands and feet all in one constellation. Fragile X is the only one. Everything is kind of big. Physically, they're going to have a long, narrow face, large ears, flat feet. Even if they, do, if, even if they don't talk about the typical one, the, mar, the macro archaidism, all those things, even if they don't say it, we should know that this is going to be fragile X. Now, fragile X is due to expanded triple nucleotide repeat. And what is a repeat? It's going to be CGG. Now, here's the thing. Fragile X is mostly seen in, uh, in, uh, in males because males have one X chromosome and the other Y, so then the chance of developing Fragile X is much higher in men. But females do develop Fragile X. And what's interesting about Fragile X is that the, the repeat, the CGG repeat, if it goes beyond 54 repeats, only then you're going to have start to have symptoms of um, fragile X because in an X chromosome naturally about 10 to 50 repeats are already there naturally so in every female CGG repeats is going to be there it's only when it crosses that 54 boundary that's when we are crossing into fragile X and the more repeats you have the more mentally retarded you have and that's why female who have fragile X tend to be a little more mentally retarded in general than the ones who are males to their male, male counterpart. So typically people who do develop fragile X is going to have repeats anywhere between 250 to 4000. So that's fragile X for you. Now what about genomic imprinting? Genomic imprinting, that's the one we see it with uh, Angelman and Prado Willy. Those are the one uh, which gives rise to, um, you know, the Prado Willy from, uh, from father and Angelman's from the mother. And so those are, those are methylation defects. Those are gene genomic imprinting. Robertsonian translocation gives rise to a Down syndrome. Trisomy 13 and 18, uh, those are associated with Edward and Patau. So trisomy 18, which is Edward, gives rise to small jaw. Here they're talking about large jaw or large face, large narrow face. Um, Edward has to do with small jaw. They're also going to have um, clenched hands, low set ears. Those are also going to be seen with uh, trisomy 18, which is, um, which is Edward. Now, moving on to trisomy 13, which is Patau. Patau is the one where we're going to have the, the four Ps. Uh, they're going to have cleft palate, cleft lip, uh, uh, they're going to have hollow prosencephaly, and they're also going to have another P, polydactyly. Okay, we also see a hollow prosencephaly in alcohol intoxication, right? Just wanted to throw it out there. Anyway, so that's our interpretation of this topic. In this question, since this guy has no long narrow face, large ears, flat feet, and he is only 26 years old, and we can tell whether he has proper motor language skills and social development by two years of age, we can tell that this patient has fragile X.